Hi, everybody. Nice to be back. My name is Dean. As always, joined by my very good friend, driver of piles, a man who's had them plenty. Please welcome Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM. Were you listening to the show this morning? Host of the Locker Room Morning Show on a radio station, Edmonton, Alberta, the last good rock. Why'd you bring that up? In the city. Piles? Yeah, why'd you bring that up? Just because. uh, It's really strange that you brought that up. Yeah, I I don't know. I love talking about hemorrhoidal things, I guess. Okay, because this morning (laughs) we were talking about how much I hate traveling. Yeah. You know why? I get travel roids. Every time I get on a plane. From sitting too long. You get roids from sitting too long? Or you no. get roids from pushing too hard, I think. That's no. I don't I get roids from traveling. Travel roids. It's real. Look it up. Get out of here. Travel roids. Travel roids are a thing. Mm. And I every time I go on vacation, I get hemorrhoids. My schedule changes, my eating changes, something goes wrong, and boom, the old the old knot starts to cause me problems yeah there's no such thing as travel roids or travel is. hemorrhoids by the way just letting you know hemorrhoids Tra- okay. with an H. it's a thing uh you got to get out it's out of your seat once per hour there is an increased risk of blood flow in the anus in the <laughs> when you're flying <laughs> yeah and you can if you sit for a long period of time no matter what you're doing including flying you're supposed to get up every hour or so to kind of Get that blood flow going because it kind of connects in the in the fulcrum of that area of your body. I take a bucket of H with region. me when I travel. Okay. And That's you know what nice. I've started doing now? I don't really I, care, but I'm sure we'll I, find out. I pre-lube. Like, if I'm getting on a plane that morning, yep. yeah, I'll... Yeah, we get how it works. Yeah. You and then... In there. Yeah, and then I, and then I travel. Because I'm combating the potent... Like, the what is the inevitable? You're heading it off at the pass. You're being preventative for travel preventative. hemorrhoids. But that yes, that that that's only if you're going to sit for long periods. You know what? I'm not even going to fucking no. Bother. Good no, for you. It's traveling. Way to go. It's not it's traveling sitting, for it's you. Tra- traveling and well, the air pressure on you. the planes. You have a dainty anus. Maybe maybe that's your problem. I, you got one of those, I always like, thought really I had a really strong robust. Life. You had I thought you had a robust leather sh- leather Cheerio. You thought you yeah. had a robust sphincter. No, it sounds I, like you I, don't. It sounds like I, you've got a very weak anus. Yeah, like I also have very affected by sitting bad lips stuff. from all the cold sores. That's cool. You have all kinds <laughs> just of torn to shit. You have all kinds of orifice <laughs> issues. This is no good. That's Mouth and no anus. Good. I got issues with all the holes. <laughs> bad hearing, bad sight. <laughs> it's true. You're a fucking walking orifice disaster, is what you are. <laughs> all the holes. I'm so happy to hear you talk about all your holes being troubled because we have a guest today. You and I like to rod nog it with each other during the week. Like we don't often bring guests in. If we do, it's like you know. Some you kinda... told me that guests don't want to be on the show because of me. Well, there's that. Yeah. Well, one guest specifically. I mean, I wouldn't put a couple of guests with you because you just run them over, and then they'd run over you, and then you do what you do, which is you normally go. I'm never going to be on a show with him again. So if you ever have Spenny I've on, I'm only not done on. that. The only person I did that with was James. Oh, and and Spenny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so more than one person. Anyway, you like this person. You know this person. Mm-hmm. She has a podcast called Muse on the Mic. She is. I've known her for 20 years. She I've is watched smart as a whip. She's an educator. She's a clinical sexologist. Well, maybe not clinical, but she's a sexologist. She is an entertainer. She's an entrepreneur. And she is jugging today, everybody. You know her as M. I know her as Emily. Her clients know her as uh, several different names. Please welcome to the program uh, one of the owners of Muse Massage Spa, one of the hosts of Muse on the Mic, Miss Emily Muse. Hey, 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 hey. Hello, gentlemen. What an intro. Yeah, you like that? You <laughs> I loved are- it. You are, I, I got to tell you something, you know, and I know you're, you're my friend. We can have, you know, uh, greasy conversations from time to time. <laughs> you're letting it all hang out today with that top. I love it. I think you, yeah. It's you, like spring outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm here. <laughs> yeah. For everybody that can't see this beautiful lady, Emily is the host of Muse on the Mic. Go and download the podcast anywhere you get your fine podcast. YouTube, they've got it. Patreon, they've got a greasy version of Patreon Uncensored. I listened to it the other day. 
she sent me like the raw version of the clip and i'm like you could probably put this anywhere she's like no we can't um so <laughs> she's got the patreon and it's lovely she does an incredible job uh, just to gr grease the track a little bit the podcast is about being an advocate for sex work the sex work industry it's an area that you've been in for uh, the better part of two decades right with muse massage yep. Spa. you are the body rub licensed safe body rub parlor not just in Toronto, but but in the country, like uh, everyone looks up to you. They look at you and they go, "How do you do what you do? How are you so safe? How do you keep smiling? <laughs> How do you provide this service?" Um, but uh, your, your podcast you just started, you've got a new one out, and you guys do a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and how would you describe before we kind of get into it? Because I know Lachlan's got some questions. He's dressed up <laughs> for the occasion. He's got a collared shirt. Didn't realize. I love it. Out. Yeah, yeah, he looks like a total nerd. Um, I wear, I, I've worn collar shirts before. Never seen you in one. You are doing it up because you knew Emily was going to be here. I know you. Partly. Partly. Yeah, I know. Um, but what is what is the podcast about? If you could, because because I had a conversation with someone this week, and they they said, "Hey, you've got the girls from Muse doing your podcast," and I go, yeah, "Well, it's their podcast." And they said, "What is it about?" And I'm like, "I think you'd have to ask Emily, but it's it's really advocacy, <laughs> it's entertainment, but." You guys do cover the gamut. You talk about therapeutics. You talk about all kinds of stuff. You know, it started with us just wanting to kind of tell our story on what it's like um, owning a body rub parlor. We've owned it for almost 15 years. And we got a lot of like hilarious, dramatic, crazy, wild stories to tell. But it very quickly evolved into a whole bunch of things. People want to hear insight from the clients. People want to hear insight from the girls. We want to talk about like popular sex things that are trending in the news or like what everyone is kind of getting into relationship questions. We do Q and a stuff like we started reacting to other channels or, or little clips that are going viral. And we're just talking about sex and relationships and adult sex work, legalities around sex work, how to have better sex, all, all kinds of different things all thrown in the kitchen sink. And so far it's been awesome. Oh, it's a great podcast. Like, Lock, it's one of Thanks. those podcasts you and the missus can, can, can kind of put on when you're on a well, drive. You, you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. It's it's authentic, right? Totally. And it's, it's taking down the – you're knocking down some walls, some barriers of a discussion that it shouldn't have walls and barriers. And I, I, I think that the the more the more things like this, the better off we are – in in society right like you need to normalize these things 100%. These, these these types of conversations need to be normalized instead we seem to be almost retracting back to yeah, going backwards right yeah, yeah yeah like we're we're trying to censor people and and yeah like did you see uh and maybe this repressive. is a great topic for you we, we great word repressing um mm -hmm. you know a few years ago everybody's free and easy gay rights are a big thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have all the sexual, everybody's like good for us. We've progressed as a society. <laughs> I don't know if you saw uh, Pierre Polyev's anti porn bill yesterday. I would love a sex work advocate, sexologist, just does more damage. Educates people. It all does. Someone who owns a body rub parlor, someone who is in these <laughs> rooms, someone who, who literally goes out and supports people in this industry mm -hmm. for very, very altruistic reasons. What do you make of what Pierre Polyev wants to do with a digital ID <laughs> for people forcing everybody in this country to give you his driver's, give him your driver's license because he <laughs> wants to prevent 18 year olds from looking at pornography? Well, and everyone has to do it to pound off. I mean, it's ridiculous. I got a great imagination. I don't need it. But whatever. That, but isn't that a nutshell right there? Yeah. <laughs> my first, my first thing I want to say to him is you first. You go first and show us your history oh, and then nice. we'll all follow along, right? Because <laughs> miss me with that, right? Everything they condemn on the right is something they're guilty of. It's always projection. It's always confession. It's just, it's, and it's annoyingly so, right? And I've been trying for the past 24 hours not to fight with too many people on Twitter, <laughs> especially because I use my account to represent the company and I can't resist. <laughs> Emily, it's I have a, I have a question for you. And and I know you're not you're not into divulging what your clients or anything, but this is a fun little game. Oh. What kind of porn do you think PP is into? I'll tell you what I what said you yesterday. His browser? What a great game. Let's play what's on Pierre Polyev's porn <laughs> browser right now. I, 
I we did this yesterday, Dean and I, and I yeah. think it's 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 Dom <laughs> stuff. Like he likes he likes high heels on his nuts, kind of yeah. stepping on his testes and, and licking Masks. the floor, and yeah. yeah, that's what I think he's into. What's his kink? Yeah, what do you think is? I I wouldn't be surprised if he's into. Not it's that's called trampling actually when you step on someone's nuts, but well anywhere on them. But <laughs> it's not always a foot fetish thing. Sometimes it's about the feet. Sometimes it's about the submission. So I agree with that. He probably likes being kicked in the balls and things like that. But if I were to if I were to lay money, I'd say two things. On his general search list, it's probably things along the lines of ejaculation denial or something called cock and ball torture (CBT). And I think on his secret dark web you know, what's that thing? VPN browser is <laughs> probably something involved with, with peanut butter and some licking of some sorts. I, I'm just convinced. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed he it. He gives me those vibes. Even if he hasn't tried it yet again since high school, but like that happened. And I'm positive. Positive. I don't, first of all, I, and I'm going to weigh in with my thoughts. I think you're both <laughs> onto something. I'm going to back off the food thing though. I bet you his private thing includes a whole bunch of stuff like i bet you he's into because he projects as you pointed out you know every every projection's a confession oh he projects against trans lgbtq people i wouldn't doubt if he likes some same sex business too like i wouldn't doubt 100 like some 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 some, some twink stuff in there he's got some <laughs> he's, stuff he's the there. twink though he's gotta yeah, have yeah. the daddy dom and the, yeah. the bears going after him for sure is there sure. can you combine <laughs> can you combine that kind of bear porn that he's probably into with dom porn like do you think 100%. he's into like bears dominating him do you think if you were to take a swing at his mm -hmm. kink not his porn browser history <laughs> what do you think his kink is according to the things he projects against i i would i would guess the overall kink is not having power or being powerless um but there's probably a huge i don't know why i see him with the ejaculation denial like really closely i'm talking like i'm a psychic like i can see it i'm out of vision ejaculation denial like, <laughs> so, like edging like people that edging, like when he's almost there edging then, but no, to no. non-completion right when so, you just before yeah. just yeah. before you get slapped <laughs> no that is so rude but that's the, the perfect time to kick someone in the balls <laughs> So if go. you're like, I'm close, I'm close, I'm close. Oh shit! <laughs> Boom! That ends that. Get the fuck out of my what house. An asshole move. You what a dick you have to be to do that to well, another what, human being. That's why he's a dick. What kind of <laughs> suffrage do you must must you enjoy to go? You know what I'm really into? Ejaculation <laughs> denial. That's denial. A it's a big thing. I didn't thing. think of that one. I didn't think of that. That's. I think you're. That's better than mine. Yeah. I if if he's really deep into it, he might even walk around with a cage under his pants. <laughs> if, he's, if he's in a if he's in a chastity cage, that's even better because that's Have complete you seen denial. I don't even know what that is. I know what a chastity belt is. I'll like, send you some pics after, Dean. Please don't. <laughs> they put Basically, thing... you can have a cage for your cock and your balls. Yeah, it could yeah, be plastic, it, it could there. be rubber, it could yeah. be metal. She or he daddy, or whatever. Daddy gets, Dom, yeah. He holds the key. The key. And so if you get a boner with one of these things, if you get it an hurts. erection, it can hurt. Yeah. Who the fuck does that to themselves? I Lots of people. know way too much about this, and I probably <laughs> oh, shouldn't. My and it's a, it's, a, it's a device that is often not used in the bedroom. It's uh, worn out in the world day to day. So you could be having a business meeting with someone, and they are just dick and balls yeah. cramped up in some metal. <laughs> yeah. And the wife at home or the mistress or somebody has the key, and it could be weeks. I am pretty sure I've had what? a couple of bosses with these things what? on. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is. All, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. all different kinds, all different intensities. Some are mild, some are really oh, intense. There's, there's one with the anal insertion piece too. Did you see yep. that down here? <laughs> is that this guy right there? That yeah. Piece? yeah. That looks aggressive. That looks more like a, that looks more like a that burden than a That looks aggressive. <laughs> don't cough. Don't sneeze. Don't raise your voice. <laughs> Or sit down. Oh my god! Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm. Listen, I'm changing my vote. Tough to, to do yoga in that. <laughs> Watching gay porn, it'd be fabulous. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna go with that. This is PP's kink: the chastity belt, but the female pat chastity belt. I think an ejaculation right. denial. It's. It's a vibe. Is that ever yeah. fascinating? I didn't even know. Right. Emily. Okay, so let's I'm go back. I'm so glad we, we asked Emily that question. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> 
So let's go back because Lachlan, as he normally does, we start down the road of please explain to me how you feel about Pierre Polyev's desire to <laughs> force people to give mm. their driver's license to prevent anyone under the age of 18 from surfing porn on the web. And then Lachlan went, fuck that. Let's talk about what you think his favorite kink is. <laughs> really glad we made that pit stop because I love it. I've never seen some of those pictures before. So thank you. Not chat, but I want to get back to the I top. Like, of the I like the yeah. like, I've never <laughs> seen one of those. I swear to God, I have. Never. <laughs> what kind of law what is, is it? <laughs> Gotta spend a day of my life. This is vanilla. <laughs> What's that thing that goes in the rectum that I've seen before? I mean, I've never seen before. <laughs> what is that? Okay, so your thoughts <laughs> on... The conservative leader of, of this country decided that he's going to force everybody into the uh, into his wormhole of giving you your driver's license. And start wherever you want because he wants to make porn illegal to watch here under 18. Okay. It's so ridiculous. Listen, I realize young children should not be viewing pornography. That doesn't matter if it's on the web or when, like back in my day, you'd find your parents' videos, right? You have no business when you're eight years old watching any of that stuff. I get it. But as with anything that is either an adult activity or adult substance or, or something that has an age limit on it, it's about teaching your kids when something is age appropriate, appropriate and healthy consumption, rules and guidelines, safety, all kinds of responsibility around it. It's no different than don't smoke, don't drink, don't gamble, blah, blah, blah. But to blame pornography, which is how the right often speaks of it, is like porn is the bad boogeyman and it's ruining society. It's ruining men. You have to now, they tell even adults now, retain your testosterone and don't jerk off because the pornography is what did it to you. And it's like, how are we blaming a movie? I mean, I, this is like blaming video games for why they're shootings. Like, it, it just doesn't make sense. The pornography itself is not the problem. It's people that have no self-control, no discipline, and overconsumption. If something gets to the point that it's interfering in your regular intimate life, you have a problem. And that could be porn or anything else. It, it, there's no problem in having kinks or wearing chastity belts, but it shouldn't interrupt in your day-to-day -day life to the point your partner's not pleasured or not happy being in the relationship. It shouldn't be that you can't function at work without something. Like any kind of abuse of substance or activity or behavior, mm. that's the problem. If you have a bunch of people that have no self-control and all they do is watch porn all day, that's the problem. It's not the porn. It, it doesn't matter, even matter what kind of porn it is. And I, this is what I've been battling about on Twitter with people. Because I'm like, can we stop blaming the movie? It's not the fucking movie. It's the man that can't keep his hands on his pants for yeah. two hours to get even like something accomplished. Yeah. Like, we, let, let's just be logical. When we got much music, I didn't leave the house for six weeks. Listen, I stayed up every Friday night late to watch Baby Blue movies when they'd be like fuzzy on the TV. <laughs> yeah, I would record those Baby Blue movies. They were right? always on city TV. Pause the when there's no like static. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bell. 100%. 100%. Stay up Sunday yeah. nights for the, the Sue Johansson sex show. Love Yahoo it. chat rooms when they first came out. I mean, yeah. the internet is full of things, right? And kids are going to find ways anyway, just like That's they have the a beer before they're 19. Emily, They're going to see things. Yeah. That's the big stupidity of this is that it's you are trying to tame a monster. There's just no <laughs> way. So if you're if you're going to attempt to try to regulate the internet on any level, you are just going to fail. And I'm not like I'm kind of with you, right? Like you can't be you can't protest too much about this them taking your porn away cuz you're going to look a certain way like you can't get too angry about it, especially as sort of a middle-aged white man. Oh my God, I can't believe they're taking away my porn. You're so not going to join the not petition look good. to keep porn in the hands of every Canadian? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. But at the end of the day, the responsibility is on the individual. and The individual and, and, or the parents or, or just whoever's gotta, teaching, influencing, guiding, you know, This is the thing that I think everybody needs to start doing. Everybody needs to start doing this. We need to push, and this is not this is not a partisan comment. We need to keep politicians out of our houses. Stay out of my house. I don't let people come to my door and tell me how to live my life. I choose to live percent. my life the way I live it. Stay out of my bedroom. Stay off my computers. Get off Just my lawn. Fix the damn roads.
Mm-hmm. Fix the roads. Seriously, though. Healthcare. Fix the roads. roads. And, and if you're going to try to police the internet, like there's a you're million other things we should start with, right? Yeah. Like child porn, fake news, Russia. Like there's a million other things that are fucking up everything. That, yeah. Like, can we not start there? Because, yeah. like, if, if we're getting court cases where you can't even go into an Apple phone anymore to figure out data history, to find out where a serial killer was, then why the hell do we care? about every penis or or whoever is consuming all of the porn like as if society would suddenly change because there's a little box that says are you 18 click like, well, those, <laughs> those boxes exist right now too right where you uh, with, with cannabis and porn uh i've heard via the grapevine if you log on to Pornhub, <laughs> it goes you, you over 18 are you over 18 you, yeah i've heard do the capacha yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've just heard rumors that when you log on to porn sites you yeah. think it would remember <laughs> i've been on it every day now for months <laughs> years you. you think it would know i'm 18 by now yeah it, so, i mean you're, if it can curate the perfect algorithm it certainly knows who the fuck you are <laughs> It's this is actually correct. wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it can do, <laughs> it if it can do surgery too. from Kuala Lumpur all the way into LA, you can probably figure yeah. out how to figure out how to get someone off the internet. But you can also assume that whoever is on the internet is going to find their way to whatever they want anyway. It's just how the internet yeah. works. Like it doesn't matter. So, like this is a lost cause, but the lost cause it's has so nothing stupid. to do with the actual idea. And the <laughs> idea that both of these governments have are like, hey, we need to do online harms. And I want your thoughts on that. Mm online harms meaning catfishing you work in a world where you've got a bunch of women on your roster abuse obviously you know you 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 stay as anonymous as you can you can you have seen being in that industry right you've Mm -hmm. seen the nefarious side of that industry you operate a very high-end body rub parlor you're an advocate you're an educator but do you think there is a need and i want your thoughts on this unvarnished thoughts Mm because what we're talking about here is is the futility of trying to force people into a little uh through a little funnel that's this big just to make sure that a couple kids aren't going to surf the web for porn we know they're going to find the porn anyway but when they're going to find it anyway yeah. uh, totally but do we just keep the internet free do you think you know being in the industry knowing how the industry abuses certain dark parts of that industry abuse the internet and people on it do you think that there is reason for some type of online harms bill or some type of policy or things to put in place for people who surf the web I mean, I'm never mad at either a platform or a device company that comes out with, let's say, new updates to their parental controls or, you know, um, because actually because of us and a situation that dealt with me and being harassed by my industry, you can't go in a Starbucks or an Apple store or like a library and look up adult websites anymore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, But aside from that, like there are ways to limit certain things when it's not appropriate for public consumption or when it does need a bit of an age restriction. At the same time, there's a hell of a lot worse that they're going to find when they're 12 years old on TikTok. There's there's so much that you can do to get around all those things. I mean, what are we going to eliminate VPNs altogether or are we just going to like that secret browser that you can have on your phone. Like, like those things are not going to go anywhere. And it reminds me a lot of the arguments um, around sex work too, which is the same idea, right? To keep the government out the bedroom, um, which, which senior Trudeau was famous for, for saying such. And, and it's like, you're not going to stop prostitution. You're not going to stop pornography consumption. You're not going to stop people smoking weed. Like there's certain things that are just human habits. And I wish it would lean towards education instead of the censorship thing. Because again, if you teach a child or or a young adult or even an adult that doesn't know certain things about sex education, about appropriateness, about consent, about, you know, private consumption of things, you don't just walk down the street watching porn, jerking off. Well, you can, but you end up in trouble. But like there's rules and guidelines around things. Only if you're a famous comedian. The only famous well, comedians like Louis C.K. do that. That's it. I was gonna he say, didn't you do it in public. <laughs> no. He just he. Have you seen his bit where he at, where he does the bit about warning everybody about asking people if they can if he can masturbate in front of them? No, <laughs> yes. I can get, it's so <laughs> funny. Look it up. Look yeah. it up. It's brilliant. It's he did it a funny. couple of years ago. Yeah, there, there was a period there, like two, three years ago, where I looked at Lachlan on the podcast. You remember this? And I'm like, are we the only two guys who have not? masturbated in front of people unannounced like everybody was getting bought for it See, and here's the even funnier thing is women do it all the time we can masturbate in public and get away with it all the fucking time how does that work and, where, does, and where, where when does it happen and where 
Here's a fun fact. I don't drive, but I have many friends that are drivers. And being stuck in traffic on the 401 is prime women masturbation time. Oh, is are there a lot of women pleasuring themselves on the 401 being stuck in traffic? For a lot. Really? Really? <laughs> yeah. A lot. That takes some skill. I love having you on this podcast. So do I. <laughs> I love being on the show with you guys. I love teaching you things. No, that's Primo. Um, in in a sort of a more private but more public moment, it happens a lot when t uh, women go for a tan in a tanning bed. I know most of my friends, most girls master either have or do regularly when they go for a tan. I know people that like in those pedicure chairs with the massaging thing or the massaging chairs at the mall, like that. What about jet <laughs> skis? Like, like they got to situate themselves perfectly on the massage chair mm -hmm. to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. so they'll just back yeah. it up a little bit. A little back maneuver. Up. Just back that thing up. Crank the little speed up a little bit. Like it's a guy. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what? That's where it, it's an advantage to be a woman. Like as a guy, yeah. if, if you're pounding off, I need. <laughs> Everyone knows. Yeah, yeah. I, no. yeah, you can't hide even under a blanket at the movie. Closed <laughs> doors. No. We can squeeze our thighs a few times and get right there. It's fabulous. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't do no. that. It, but, but listen, see, the government listen. wouldn't control that. No. Just, just like they wouldn't be like, oh, the women well, and their stop thighs. Telling people that it's <laughs> happening because you never know. They might try. All of a sudden, there'll be a no anti. There'll be an anti uh, masturbation rule on the four hundred one. And well, now I'm, I mean, dude. Now and every, I drive the four hundred one almost every day. Now I'm just going to be looking for women. Women, okay, just <laughs> buy a higher car <laughs> and look down. You'll be fine. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Uh, back, back to back to uh, acts of public masturbation. Uh, yes. we were I actually have a question about mas women masturbating too. No, I have please. A, sure. Yeah, no, I do. What? Why is that no, a problem? I, I have a solution for your travel bum too. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Okay. No, I, she was she was on a heater talking about. <laughs> And I don't even remember I, what we we're talking about now because you took it sideways again. You did it again. No. I, well, then we'll I, then I'll continue. <laughs> okay. I read ahead. a study, Emily. Yes. That suggested that <laughs> the whole myth, the size does matter, is actually just that, just a myth. And what it was based on was a um, a study of the toys that women buy to self pleasure, and it was a breakdown on the size. And most of them, like I guess, well over fifty percent of them were devices that would suggest that size is not a big deal that very few toys with girth are bought for that purpose so mm -hmm. i was wondering if that does put a little bit of uh asking for a friend if that puts into question the size does matter myth <laughs> you the better study hope it is does. absolutely correct <laughs> it okay. is though it's absolutely correct now if if Anyone knows anything about anatomy, a vagina can pop out a baby and shrink back to its original size, right? So girth is not the problem. However, like anything, if you were to consistently keep something stretched out, it will stay stretched out for longer. So if women were at home just trying to sit on a pylon all the time, we'd just be walking around gaping everywhere, and that would be a mess. Well, the purchase in of essence, sex toys is generally... Most average. of it is external, actually, and the stuff that we do use internal is usually not very girthy. Mostly, not even because we're worried about stretching. That's a man thing that they're worried about. But it, it's more so because it's really only the first two inches of the, the the vulva and the vagina itself that have the sensitivity. I mean, we can he feel when you're eight inches deep, especially if you go hit a cervix, but that's not where the pleasure points really are. So most of our self pleasure is done externally, or that's why even fingering is nice. I mean, you can only get in so far when, when you're doing that. So all we want to do when we masturbate is come just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> External toys are so much easier or small insertion. I don't, I don't know if Lachlan was asking so he could learn something or if he was asking just to hear you <laughs> talk about it, to be honest with you. I could be a bit about. Hey, listen, I I had it written down. You told me we were interviewing Emily. I was reading the study the other day. I love size it. might not matter. No, based it's purely on the fact study. on what women are purchasing to to you know yeah. to self pleasure at home. And I thought it was be an interesting question. I have another one. If you we know want what? To go one more point though, I'll story, add yeah. Yeah. because I will say if we had to choose, I'm, I'm generalizing here. If we had to choose, we would pick girth over length. Girth. Okay, so. 
as opposed to the feeling of fullness is nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> the feeling of having your guts punched is not nice. <laughs> In summary, here's, an, here's another question for I'm you. learning all kinds of things that I'm going to use in every other podcast from now on from Emily. <laughs> here's another here's another question for you, Emily, because Dean obviously didn't prepare. Throw them at me. Uh, okay. <laughs> so at <laughs> When people come down to the to the parlor, right? Mm -hmm. I imagine there is some some initial awkwardness, especially for somebody that's new and, and they're not used to it. They might not be comfortable with the idea, so they're there for whatever reason. Doesn't matter. But like out of the like, if you get a hundred guys that come through the door over a certain period of time. 1290 Finch Avenue West, Toronto, Ontario, Unit 13. Go to MuseMassageSpa.com for more details. Continue. So if nice somebody butt. comes down, get 100 How many are coming down with a specific request? Like, I want my salad tossed. Is there a salad tossing room? Always like, with the, are always there with the salad tossing, right? Like, it's on the menu. <laughs> Can't help it. I think like, we know what he would get honestly, when he when he comes in March for the Zach Bryan show. It. We're going to the Zach Bryan show. I'm going to bring him in. <laughs> go through the menu. You need to put on the menu that one day. Lachlan salad tossing. Uh, You're going to need a right break, girl. <laughs> Just based on what that thing's been through. I don't necessarily think I would put anybody through that. Okay. So uh, just what percentage are asking for something specific? And then I have another follow-up question. Asking out loud or have something yeah. in mind? Have like well, how many come in loud. going? I'm here for a very specific purpose, other than just give me a girl. I need to get. I yeah, PP pee -pee comes in and goes. Yeah, yeah. I want some. What did you call it? <laughs> Ejaculation trampling. denial. Ejaculation denial. Yes, I want that. I'm into some trampling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CBT. CBT. There you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I, I would, mm, this is tough. It, it would really depend, but I would say at least 40%. Wow. Although that many. Okay. Some, some are shy to talk about it initially. It might come up in the first few minutes though. Cause I mean, the girls are really great at making people comfortable. Um, for a newbie, it's a lot easier to call and ask or email and ask questions too. If they're nervous about talking to a pretty girl in person about it. Yeah. Um, cause even our managers are pretty, so it makes them a little uncomfortable and nervous. Um, but I think anything when you're doing something for the first time new, I, like I would be shitting my pants if I was a guy, like the first time yeah. going in a place, I'd be like, what the hell's going to happen? I don't know if I'd be brave enough. Okay. Follow up question. How many guys come yeah. down and want the prostate thing? Uh, out of all customers, at least 60%, but it's probably included in another session i guess part what? of the activity yeah come on and there's definitely salad tossing or getting your salad tossed <laughs> well there, you already have that on your menu i just i just, you just assumed you didn't because that's the right person to me. <laughs> you gotta, the right person yes you do <laughs> some people do it some people don't <laughs> well, it's like i guess i guess uh i guess the massage a body rub parlor would have to have, you know, experts in certain fields as well, right? Like you have, it's like when you go to a doctor's office, you might go see an orthopedic surgeon, you might go see a chiropractor, you might go see, but so right. good, good analogy, you, Dean. you got good analogy. You got your salad tossers, you got your, you know, the big uh, people. The prostate like, hunters. Everybody has an, a niche or a specialty or a preferred list. I try to keep track of what all the girls are really great at or what they prefer to do so I can refer properly. Oh, wow. um, but that evolves too. Like, Things that yeah. I didn't do at the beginning of my career, I ended up doing like crazy near the end. Things, <laughs> things I hated in my career, I don't do in my personal life, or vice versa. Like it just depends. That's hilarious. Well, I guess I, as you as you yeah. as you progress in the field, you'd acquire different yeah. skills. And you Show us your you hands. Learn. Show us your hands, Emily. They're lovely you're not, now, you're, but you're not, I couldn't have nails the, like this back then. You're not the prostate hunter anymore. <laughs> no, but I am the teacher. I am the teacher. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Because I've yeah. heard. Oh man, we're getting into it. Now we're into yes. it with the with Muse on the Mic podcast and sexologist host Emily Muse. Emily, let me ask you something about this prostate thing. Is it real or is it just a lie? Because is it a myth? Is it one of those no, things? No, it's very, very, very real. Really? Very, very real. Really? Like I'm a believer the G spot is real because I've felt it and done it myself. But yeah. it, uh, prostate orgasm is even more real, if that's possible to say in like 
grammatically. Is, you just, you, you just <laughs> I told you, Dean, about a about a guy I used to work with who was shocked <laughs> that I didn't masturbate with a dildo in my bum. Like he was like, you don't know, what? And I'm like, no. And he's like, you don't? And I'm like, no, I don't. And he goes, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> They're those guys that open up their mouth and like they bring something to the table that's just ridiculous <laughs> because they do it so much. I love those guys because they do it so much. They just assume everybody does it. You're like, do you not know? What the are you talking room, about? The whole room wait, goes quiet. When there, they are, <laughs> there are prostate pleasure toys that don't involve insertion. That you could start off with just to feel what prostate pleasure feels like. I'm good. Okay, you need to explain <laughs> that because I thought you had to go in mm -mm. to get there. And technically, there's two is ways: either internal it, okay. yeah. or external. What's the external? Team yeah, plays all in a sense, but I is don't believe it. Either. So <laughs> you just, you just want to beat the shit out of the taint or something, or what? One minute he says, "No, I'm good." The next minute he's like, "The taint." <laughs> I'm wow, asking because I don't know it's what you're taint. talking about. It's, it's Deary, the Deary. Taint. Deary, is it is it okay. like a, a mad massaging of the gooch? Is that what yes. you're talking about? So it's a little of this? Yep. Okay. Enough of the Oh god, this. no. Enough don't do it this. like that. That's terrible. Technically your prostate sits right above your taint, which is the, the patch of skin between your balls and your bum. Thank you. I'm and well so aware. that's where it sits. Well, not that every listener. That is ends. something we know. <laughs> That is yeah. true. And, and you know what? Let me just say this before you continue. That I've never been life, a bum guy. Never been. Me neither. I got wedged yeah. once in high school. I'm way out. Um, so the guy, there, I am serious. It's like a panic button down there. I'm like, don't <laughs> touch it. Uh, so the, 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 that area of the body to me is referred to as mm -hmm. taint, the gooch, gooch, or in females, I refer to it as the kaziff. The ka what? Kaziff. Kaziff because... was near your guts and fall out. Well, yeah, that's terrible. That's <laughs> I do I do find that men I think I have let her quite, finish. Let her finish. I don't want to hear from what you found. We're, we're on to no, I love you so good. much. You're a great guy, but M M's on a heater <laughs> and I want to know how to milk the prostate from the outside. Go ahead. There you go. I love this. So so if you don't if you don't want to do it with your hands and be reaching around, which can yeah. be awkward. There are toys. No punching. I see you over there. <laughs> Long time <to> control yourself. <laughs> there are toys that literally oh, have what I would consider a handle. Yeah. And then it has like a curved portion with like a flatter spot at the end that you use as leverage to put pressure on that point. So as you're masturbating or just playing around with the toy to feel how it feels, you can find the right spot you want on it, and you can hold it from the handle, so you don't have to be right up under your stuff. And you can just practice how you like the the pleasure of the pressure. Is it got a grip it on it? Like, is it got like okay. so it doesn't slip out? Like rubber. Most of them are even like like a like a full loop. Like you put your hand through the loop, so it wouldn't I'm even fall off. I need it. I was not. <laughs> Did you hear Lachlan's biggest concern? Like a man who loves power tools is like, what kind of grip do those come with? Is it <laughs> I mean, I could wrap a hockey stick real well. We could help like pad that up a bit. <laughs> oh my God. I learned so much today. So is that called milking? Right. Is, that, is that what I understand? Milking, milking the prostate. That's yes. Called, and you yeah, know what? It it's very, very, very healthy to do. It helps reduce inflammation of the prostate, which is the leading cause of prostate cancer, inflammation. Mm -hmm. If That's you're prostate. Uh, let's let's exactly say often. So oh, if you are if you are like that. doing that a lot without without down there with a like a weapon or a tool. Yeah, it sounds what you it's a completely to me, different orgasm too. Like more so you can have a prostate orgasm and more, have a regular penis orgasm. Or you can time intense? the two together. What is it? Does a prostate, more intense. Yeah. Does a prostate more orgasm include no, not necessarily. That's it weird. doesn't it doesn't trigger ejaculation because that's a different like system of body parts, right? Your prostate is its own gland. Yeah. Whereas your testicles is what produce semen and ejaculate. There you go. Different things. Like you didn't know that. I can't believe you didn't know that, Lachlan. Uh, I did not. <laughs> There's been a lot today. Yeah, there has been Yay! really greasy, and I love it. Um, I love it. Okay, so is it possible because what you described for the prostate milking on the external, not the internal, mm -hmm. the internal's way out, external's out, I'm out. I'm just asking for an interested party. 
who will sure. remain nameless, who goes by the name Lachlan Cross, because I could tell you <laughs> his interest. Could you use I'm like take really a hammer? I'm gonna just like ball peen hammer. All right. Could Part you use? <laughs> could you use like um? Because it, it has to have a hook to it. Could you use a shepherd's hook or say a gourd? I would. A, a gourd could probably work. A shepherd's hook, no. You don't want to use anything spiky. However, as funny as it is to picture, a hammer on the flat side actually has the right leverage. Also, lock the on the There you go. So you could like tilt the flat spot, could push. It'll just be yeah. freezing cold and and this, not made of very cushy hygienic rodeo. stuff. <laughs> Can Honey, I found a use for that you hammer imagine. you bought me in, De in 1990. Coming in the room at night, you're you're feeling Randy. You got your speedos on. You got some, maybe some like uh, I don't know, <laughs> some Christopher Cross on or some shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely don't use it at the radio at the rodeo because yeah. that wouldn't go well either. <laughs> Terrible. But she walks in. You got some music on. You got some lube and a hammer in your hand, and you're like, yeah. baby, tonight hey. is my night. Tonight, tonight is, is all my night. night. Light a Call candle. me the handyman. <laughs> oh shit! Ooh, I learned something. So it's, good. It's I love it. We we never have these conversations. It's like googling. Yay. You know how many times we sit there and we ask, have a conversation with somebody, and we'll go, "What do you think about this?" And they're like, "I don't know." And nobody googles it. Nobody's like, you know, you just sit there in ignorance all the time. So for the past yeah. twenty years, I've heard about prostate milk, and I'm like, <laughs> "Eh, that's a myth. Eh, that's wrong." Today, with the owner of Muse Massage Spa, musemassagespa.com, 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario, musemassagespa.com. Download their podcast, Muse on the Mic, anywhere you find podcasts, including Patreon. What's your partner's Patreon name Super. again? Riley. 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 She's awesome, yeah. too. She's really good. Yeah. But I learned that it's not a myth after living not in prostate milking <laughs> ignorance for 20 plus years. <laughs> Welcome Thank to the you. dark side, sir. It's going to be a full Welcome. weekend for Dean. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I'm interested. I don't. I, I don't think I can try. I have. That's um, sad. Why live your whole life for this one section of your body that's designed to give you pleasure and never discovering it? Just a uh, long why life. You got to do that. Why do you do Listen, that? I could coerce you in anything. <laughs> you know you could. I don't know that anybody on this planet like that could go, Dean. hey, Dean, I've got a hammer. I got some KY. Okay. I got some. Bend nice over. Music. Let me show you a little something. So. Yeah. 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 I'll be like, all right. If it's UM, <laughs> okay. I trust you. I trust okay. you. You're not going to kill me with that thing. Go ahead. Never. It's, it, it is. I don't know what it's called. Like, because I'm a pretty open guy. I can have a conversation about just about anything with anybody. Love um, it. But I am, um, I, and I don't know if it's a repression thing or what, but I very, very, specific and i would even suggest very um utilitarian when it comes to my sexual sort of you know my position in life and it and i just okay. can't see myself changing right like why i don't know why i can't explain it like i have no <laughs> desire right now to run down to the bedroom with my ball peen hammer and see if i can milk the old prostate. <laughs> i just don't right I, I and I I understand what you're saying. It just I don't. I'm not wired that way. Do you? Huh. I think there's a difference too between self exploration and exploring with a partner. Right. It could be more comfortable either way, depending on the person and and their partnership. Um, sometimes it's easier with a partner to discover new pleasure zones or new pleasure activities. But I think and like most things, you should evolve. I mean, we try to evolve as in our jobs, as human beings, as, as adults, as parents, as friends, and just get better. So to limit your sex life, again, is cutting out a whole wedge of the pie that is life and the human experience. You should be curious. You should be at least trying. I believe in trying everything twice. The first time it's really awkward and bumpy. So try something twice because you might enjoy it the second time and you might realize you don't like it. And therefore that's something you never want to do again, but there's no harm. Just like searching for a new porn category or watching something and thinking, Oh, I never thought that would make me excited. Now all of a sudden you have a new category to dive into. It should be the same with, with your partner and with your self pleasure. You should yeah. constantly be growing. <laughs> you know, and, and, and here's the thing that fits with life. Does it not like we talk? Yeah. And, and I'm being serious here. Like we've talked about milking prostates, gourds, hammers, ball peen hammers. We've had some fun with chastity <laughs> belts today. We've talked about uh, all kinds of greasy stuff and I love it yeah. because it's fun and we're enjoying ourselves and we're learning at the same time But on a, on a much, a much lighter kind of serious note. 
the business of life is to get better at life, different aspects mm-hmm. of life. And up until about six, seven years ago, I thought the business was life to get as many things as you could and then drink yourself to death. Apparently not. That's a bad idea. Um, <laughs> and I can tell you over the past couple of years is I've applied that get busy at the business of life to the other aspects of my life as well. To what Lachlan's saying, you ask me, you know, you're very utilitarian. Yes, of course, for years, right? You get married, you have kids. You're like, oh, you wake up, the same person's there all the time. You're like, okay, here, great, off to work, have a great day. Not interested. No, 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 no. At the age of 50, now 51, as of two weeks ago, my life is completely different because I've applied that lens to all aspects mm-hmm. of my life for some reason, which is what bothers me about this porn bill, bothers me about ignorance when it comes to sex, bothers me when it comes to about education because these kids are trying to educate themselves. People are always trying to educate themselves. They don't turn into degenerates, to your point, because they try new things or they're exposed to new things. And do I get that porn isn't a traditional way of lovemaking? Yes, I totally get it. But it also can be, and it can be exciting and fun and greasy and dirty and all those other cool things. Somehow we vilified it. Yeah, but in that process, Em, and you must see a lot of people that come to Muse, a lot of men, probably a lot of women, they come there and go, man, it's missionary every night or, you know, once a month, twice a month, I'm on a schedule. And I have this beautiful desire or need to explore myself, right? I our business wouldn't be in business without that, which is so sad. It's it's kind of a a frustrating part because I believe you should expand your palate. Like like I don't think you should live a life eating chicken fingers and fries forever. I think you should enjoy the fact that we have options. And it's sad to hear those kinds of stories all the time. And it's worse than just once a month they're only missionary there there are mass amounts of people in marriages that barely even have anniversary or valentine sex or that only are intimate on vacation or have gone six ten eight twelve years without a blow job like people literally live like this and then people wonder why one of the two partners or both get sick of it and start doing things on the sly whether that's an affair whether it's seeing a professional sex worker but there's also a shame factor put to it. Like if you've tried to tell your partner that you're curious about something or you like something and they've reacted poorly to it, it can make you feel judged and shame. And then it can even affect how you open up to a sex worker when you try to actually discover that side of yourself. And I've seen people so resistant to almost speak up about their needs because they're so used to being shunned or shamed because of it. And and it could be something I've heard countless men tell me stories of waking up in the morning, morning boner. And for whatever reason, the wife is livid about that. Like just to look at it and be like, what is wrong with you? Why can't you control yourself? That's all you ever think about. And it's like, excuse me? Like, you should be happy my dick still works, lady. (laughs) It rose this morning and so did I. I'm grateful to Jesus. Like, I just don't understand why that that shame comes in or why that disconnect happens. But it is so common and so consistent. Even something simple, if you wanted to, like, tell your wife you like her feet. I mean, foot fetish to me is the most mild of all fetishes. It's also the most common. And it could be something again, as simple as you're laying on the couch, everybody's relaxing on a Sunday afternoon, wife puts her feet up on your lap. If you like feet, you're rubbing her feet, you got a boner. She could react, oh, this is nice. Or she could react very badly and be like, what the fuck? You're a pervert, what's wrong with you? And then how are you ever going to bring up your wants or desires ever again once that's been laid out? Mm. You end up at, you end up at Muse. Mm. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And then yeah. you get end up having to answer those questions. Which is really And we're like, hey, we got feet. <laughs> yeah, we celebrate feet. We love here. morning wood. Come we open the nine. <laughs> yeah, we open the nine. Morning wood, two hundred bucks. Have a great time. Um but but listen, you bring up some really great points, right? Like Lachlan talks about the utilitarian need that some people have, or people talk about what they don't get. People talk about mm-hmm. I know people that have been in these relationships and really tried to stay faithful for a long period of time. Uh one person that I know specifically never really been satisfied by the other person and Mm -hmm. and like has hung in there and hung in there and hung in there and then details about that lack of satisfaction come out and it's an anatomy issue and it's also a uh a staying power issue always has been Mm -hmm. and you know it's it's interesting because you know in in the big scheme of things and and by the way this is a universal 
kind of issue that a lot of people have. It could be with the Absolutely. man, it could be with the mom, it could or sort of the, the husband, it could be the wife, it could be with the boyfriend, the girlfriend over time. Yep. And without that lack of exploration, people start to go and do other things, right? When they get shamed, when they get told what they like or what they don't like is terrible. So they go out and they experience those things because it's a need they have. It's a physical, it spiritual, is. existential, psychological need to explore. That's how we are. We're like Magellans with wieners. That's all we do. Uh, or vaginas. We all have these different kinks, desires, and all these other directions that we like to go with that part of our lives. So I find it unbelievable, though, Em that that's a surprise to the other person who isn't doing their duty or is, doesn't want to go on that journey with them when they're like, what is this credit card charge for? Oh, that's for Muse Massage Spa because you won't touch me or we keep having missionary or I've asked to look at your feet or I've asked to do this and, and right. you make fun of me. You tell me I'm disgusting, all those other things. So it's, it's amazing true. to me because like it's it's literally a therapeutic need that people have to be able to explore themselves and figure parts of their lives out, which can add so much joy to your life. Like, I don't think people realize, and, 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 and listen, I'm not going to take people on my journey, but I don't think people realize. And if you could plug people into those new experiences, nothing crazy, nothing weird, but yeah. trustworthy, right? Mm -hmm. This trustworthy experience that you have with another person to go, I want to try this. And they're like, game, let's give it a go. That yeah. is that's like lifeblood of a great now I need to know your story. What did you yeah. do? Did you get a swing in the bedroom, Dean? No, no, there's no story. It's just you know, there's make a, sure you hit a trust, make sure you hit a, a joist, trust, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's true. Like, buddy, that's a great, great point. A friend of mine ordered a sex swing to the house, put it up. Wife comes home, she looks at it, she's like, Take that fucking thing down. Are you insane? <laughs> And she's like, I leap like, right in it. Like, really? that, yeah. That, 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 see, that's the thing. That's the thing. Just hoist me up there. I'll be good. <laughs> Never tried one. I don't think I could. It'd be just, it's me like neither. Just too much. Yeah, just, I don't know what the swings for you, Dean. <laughs> Maybe. Is it? Is it a swing for dudes or is it for females? It can give, it, it can give you leverage in a position. Yeah, so I can yeah. also alleviate some gravity. It depends what she's positioned as. <laughs> There you go. I thought this. Well, I I shouldn't. I, I don't want to say anything because it'll just show my nativity. Naivete. <laughs> Naivete. Na, 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 nativity is, is completely is Christmas. Yeah. What? That's, that's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, nativity which scene. by the way needs to also be added to the guaranteed sex days. Correct. I've been, trying, I've been pushing for Christmas and Father's Day. For some reason, Father's Day isn't on the list. Are you Valentine's serious? Valentine's Day that anniversary. Sad. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just ask. Just ask. Very, it's not on a, the list. That was some terrible Father's Days, I'll tell you that. Ugh. Oh, that that was sad. Fat Dean. Well, actually, Fat Dean preferred to be left alone <laughs> on Father's Day. That was so it was Listen, actually. Listen, it's, it's very relatable. I was in an eight year living relationship in my uh, 20s, and six of it was sexless, not by my choice. So I can relate to to dudes in that scenario. Wait a second. Well, you know what? Hang on. You are a professional mm -hmm. sex person. And the mm -hmm. guy was like, no, thanks. Is that correct? No, thanks. That's mm -hmm. the dumbest guy in the world. Was, was correct. that, was, <laughs> but hold on, Emily. Was that something, was there something else going on there? Was. Maybe. Yes, but that's not a story I'm ready to tell. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, how do I, how do I glaze over this? It, it wasn't a, uh, an affair or something like that. It, no, it was something it, much, much more serious and, and much more dramatic. Um, but it almost killed me in terms of my, my, my well being mentally because I tried everything. Yeah. And it was very confusing at the time I was still a sex worker. So it was very confusing trying all the things that I know are supposed to work with men and, and trying lots of things because I know not everybody's the same versus going to work and having people begging and offering to pay money for things I didn't even do. And, and it was, it mentally, it was, it was very yeah, chaotic for me. It was very yeah. confusing. Yeah. I it, was, worked, it was detrimental. I worked with somebody and um, I remember the complaining, opening up to me, complaining about their situation, their, their marital situation. And I said, maybe he's gay. Right. I think and it's hilarious. You have people coming to you for marital advice. That's so it was odd. <laughs> so it was a little, 
So Dean, so I didn't really know where to go. I don't have but that the could tools be a real thing too, to negotiate and it is. those conversations. And um, and then like literally six months later, she came to me and she went, Oh my god, he's gay. He's gay, yeah. And I went, <laughs> I said, Okay, I felt bad about saying it at the time, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that the two of you ended up and 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 it and mm -hmm. it worked out for a period of time, and then he was not because this woman was wildly attractive so mm. the first thing that popped into my mind was well yeah yeah i mean yeah. i i mean he I, likes <laughs> he likes if a you know, similar if, anatomy yeah you, you can't right. fight with that you i think back in the day that happened that happened with gay people a lot because they weren't allowed to come out so they yeah. just did the thing and, and ended up in a lot of like some of those marriages were sexless for that reason for sure um, and I know those people, when they're seniors and they finally are able to live their true, authentic life, it's it's actually it's the most beautiful. Yeah, I love those it's videos and on. stuff because, like, it's to finally be able to be yourself when you're 67 is is so sad, so profound, and so joyous all at the same time. Yeah. And it, it's so relatable because it's if so anyone's sad. hindered themselves from anything that you've really wanted to do, I mean, life can change in a heartbeat, and you find yourself. In the middle of a pandemic, locked at home, going, maybe I should paint. Like it just it becomes a thing that you realize you should start to do. And I think a lot of people, when they get more comfortable, maybe you shouldn't go back to work. Maybe you should really be a painter, or or maybe you should follow that that dream or that love that you've always known is in there and you've had to deny your whole life. It's well, a long life the, too. The sex toy industry um was moving towards the dolls. Did do you remember this? Yeah. Like the real dolls, the ones that like you're like, man, that looks like a real person. Well, so I don't creepy. know. We had, I know there's one in Toronto, and I think it's Girl Next Door or Doll Next Door. I think it's yeah, called. There, there was a rub and tug that was like full of yeah, dolls. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's like not in doll. operation anymore. Yeah, no, I think that's went, went, really quick. That was yeah. smart because you and know. It, why no, hold it, it, but I remember. I think what killed him was <laughs> just to give you some backstory. It was it was hilarious. Like kind of just, poor it, cleaning. It was about five six Methods? years ago. They planted to like put all these fake AI real like sex dolls in this place where you could go in instead of real women, you could have sex with these mm -hmm. dolls. And what killed them was they couldn't clean them fast enough or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I, I think that's what it was. And and yeah. worst job ever. What's your job? Well, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I got to clean out Sally 17 I'm times silicone a day. silicone cleaner, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I operate. You went to hospitality yeah. school for nothing? The, the service in Edmonton was even going to deliver. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, if you've got something weird that you like and you haven't <laughs> been able to experience it, this is, the, this is the perfect thing to practice on, right? So I was like all for it. I thought that it should have been something we should have been encouraging as a society. <laughs> Right now, uh, I'm a I little worried a about bridge it. too far, and I think that's one of them, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> like, the uh, dolls, uh, yeah, the dolls. Like you can, you can. Mm, I've got one for you. It's actually yeah. it's shocked me. And Riley and I just recorded an episode this week that's coming out. Um, I think in two weeks about this. I saw an article about a spa in New Hampshire, of all places, that is a diaper spa for adults. Where you so can go and have your diaper changed. You can walk around in your adult diaper fetish life and pay just to be there. Mm. And she was trying to like fight licensing and all kinds of cool stuff. And I was like, I didn't think there'd be enough demand for a brick and mortar, especially in no. a place like New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah. Atkinson, New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, they were just denied I, a permit by the town. Yeah. So the owner. They, they didn't get it. The adult diaper spa will not be allowed yep. to operate the business out of her home. But I love her cojones to even try to make that a thing. I think there's like I wasn't I wasn't cross about the the um, sex toy spa. I thought it was a little strange at the time. I feel like the whole yeah. AI trend has gotten a little further that people are just gonna have to wrap their heads around that soon. But it, to me, immediately, I was like, okay, hygiene. Like I, I knew all of the red flags that were gonna pop up from a licensing perspective right away. Oh, but I, I definitely, I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's a real thing. Like hygiene is a big deal at, at our spot yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, it would be at a tanning salon. Anywhere you lay your naked body is just potential for ick. I don't even like public hot tubs because, ew, human soup is disgusting. But in, in essence, like you, I like that people try to make 
somewhere for people to go that have a community and don't have somewhere as an outlet. I think there never would have been a sex club or a bathhouse unless someone first tried it. So I'm all for it. But uh, the diaper one kind of threw me, especially in America. I was like, what? <laughs> would they change your diaper if you soiled it too? Is that, is that uh -huh. probably, uh -huh. probably there's a cost involved. Uh, what I couldn't find in any article though is if happy endings were included or not. Oh, that's which definitely changes I'm lines in, in legality. Uh, yeah, but. yeah, I got it. I, that's where you know how last week or a couple weeks ago you're on the show, <laughs> you're like never kink shame. I'm like, can we do that one though? Can we? <laughs> no, okay. no, because it's it's not harming another person. If everyone's consenting, that's cool. It doesn't have to be my jam. It doesn't what have to be your jam. But if they can go into a place and do that. I'm like, cool, do it, <laughs> enjoy it, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> sure, I guess. Sure, yeah. I, you know what? I'm gonna like, leave. What if I told you there. I rented Not a horse remember. for the weekend? <laughs> like, where do you stand with that, Emily? <laughs> I would feel like you need a little guidance, <laughs> maybe a chaperone. <laughs> I'd be a little worried. You need someone maybe standing someone from by. the humane society. Keep the lights on. Yeah, don't don't experiment in the dark. You should yeah. you should be okay though. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hey, I got a question for you. We got okay. three on the panel. Yeah. Would cool. you bang a robot. Raise your hand. Would you bang a robot? Mm. Like if they get the real dolls to the point where they're robotic and not bad, you would? No, I wouldn't. I couldn't do it. It's too mechanical. I can't. Uh, everybody's got to be into it. But do it. wait, it's if it's meant runner. to be real, it wouldn't be mechanical, right? Well, it's not real. Like, have you, have have you tried it. a flashlight? No. What? No, I don't need to. No, I don't need to. What? No. no. no I prefer what? My hand ideas. works really this well. This is why God I'm... did not give me a penis because I would stick it in everything I could find. <laughs> be like, what's that like? Well, what's that like? What's that like? No, 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 no. no. I'm very <laughs> judicious about where that thing goes. I'm like, hey, it's like you're walking around with something that you want to protect for the rest of your life. It's like uh, slap a like condom on and fuck the apple pie. What are you talking about? <laughs> See, <laughs> do I, everything. I don't. I can't wrap my head around a. Flush. I can't. <laughs> like I, I, you know, what? there's an orifice there. I'm afraid I might get cinnamon in my pee hole. I don't want to do that. Flashlights have evolved to the most spectacular. I'm so envious. They are spectacularly made now. You guys get more settings and options than we do. Really? It's actually, I, I have outrageous. a buddy, a Dean. I have a buddy that has like 30 of them. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not. Yeah. I'm not even joking. He's got. Yep. He's got specialty <laughs> ones. He's got everything. I'm like, I went to his basement. I'm like, what are those? And he goes, those are flashlights. My collection. And, yeah. then, <laughs> and then we went into another room. I is swear he, is to God. he single? Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And then I went into another room and he had a whole bunch of high heels. And I'm like, hey. I want to go outside. I don't want to be in here anymore. <laughs> go outside. You know, I have buddies of mine because we sit, we have a, uh, toy shop at the um, front of our spa. So we have a yep. supplier and I have many friends that order through me for their fresh fleshlight needs. Most of them are, are married and some of them happily surprisingly now that I think about it, but they swear by them. Well, I'm, I'm just looking at these. I, I, I didn't, I just thought they had one. Now they've got one that looks like it comes in a bazooka. Um, <laughs> As you yeah, can see that's, here, that's here. Yeah, there's vibe settings, there's suction settings, there's heat yeah. settings, there's so there's attachments, there's somewhere your your content looks, comes out the other end. Like you yeah, somewhere your partner can control it. It's wild. You could take down a Russian fun. helicopter with this one. Uh, Maybe the Quick Shot <laughs> Launch also offers a fully automated quick flashlight shot. flashlight experience <laughs> for use with your Quick Shot toys. The Quick Shot Launch controls the length of your strokes as well as the speed. Look at that thing. Go. It goes on your arm. Oh, she looks goes so on your <laughs> arm. <laughs> yeah, if a woman like that looked at me like that and had that apparatus in her hand and she said, Take your pants down, I'd run. You, I'd run. What? Yes. I'd uh, run for the but great reviews. I would drop my pants so fast. <laughs> Kurt H72, verified buyer, assist for a 72 year old. What an absolute miracle for a man of my age. It's seven. There you go. I can find pleasure and joy with the assistance of this device. Yes. None of those. Really. A mobility again aid. And again and again, he says. I love it. Yeah. That's a very user of the actual fleshlight. Uh, but, but back to the actual. Flesh Listen, folks. it makes sense. If you, um, if you're old and you yeah. have mobility issues, you need something to do the up and down for you. 
It's genius. I guess so. I guess look, so. the blue look, one, look one, your cock like head it. comes out the top, so you Great. can still see the top of your penis, because some men really like to look at their own dick. Yeah, I'm not uh, checking that thing out while I'm busy. I, I just can't do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there's a bunch. Of, wow, what an education mm-hmm. today! I, I had no yeah. idea you can even eat this one. Apparently, yeah, there's different inserts, and you can like swap out the inserts for different textures and all yeah. kinds of cool shit. It's really fascinating. That is very fascinating. Oh, right? It's been a it's been a huge day for both Dean and I. It really has. Thank you. Not only did <laughs> I'm so I really proud of you both. Thank you. Thank you for You're growing. Awkward conversations. Thank you very much. Really, I don't time. find any of these conversations <laughs> awkward, though. I, Me I don't. I don't. <laughs> but watching him squirm is hilarious. <laughs> Dean, yeah. Dean is a little bit of a squirmer. Yes. Well, yeah. my name is on every one of these platforms that we use to actually <laughs> bring people these. So, it's, it's do like, you think we'll have a problem putting this out? <laughs> if we didn't have a problem with the last time M was on, we're definitely not going to have a problem with any okay. of these conversations. Remember what she told us she did on the beach once? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about that right now. But I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it again either. Up. I don't know what you're talking about. Wasn't me. <laughs> oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, Emily, I want to thank yes. you for spending some time having some laughs, educating us, talking about things that matter, specifically about sexual health, about pornography, uh, you know, you about on. policy, about kindness, about not shaming, about mm. diaper spas in New Hampshire. Thank you. <laughs> It is always person. great to see you. You're it's good always a too. pleasure. Where can people find you to utilize Muse Massage Spa's therapeutic services, specifically <laughs> if they're in situations that don't provide a safe environment to try trampling? CBT. <laughs> to try everything, including everything. the vanilla stuff. Yes. Uh, you can find <laughs> us. Uh... Salad tossing. There you go. Listen, email me through the spa website and I will refer you to who you need. <laughs> MuseMassagePod.com <laughs> MuseMassagePod.com Check out your muses. Yeah. Check out the schedule. Contact Emily or Riley. They will get back to you. Here's the thing. They've got a podcast. Highly recommend you download it because this is what she will give you, her and Riley, recounting stories, talking about everything from mileage to 69ing, by the way. Yes, yes, that episode yeah, that comes out a, next week. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. The promo for it is excellent. Muse <laughs> massage spa.com. Muse on the mic. That's at Muse on the mic. Anywhere you get Muse on the mic, uh, Google, Apple, Spotify, etc. You've got a Patreon as well. Muse on the mic Patreon, correct? Yes. Uncensored. Yes, so you can get the Uncensored, real stuff. extra episodes. Definitely not made for YouTube. <laughs> Definitely not. But they also have YouTube. So go and subscribe to their YouTube channel, Muse on the mic. Uh, pump that it's into kind of YouTube crazy what you find. talk about on the YouTube channel. It is for now. It, it is. <laughs> I, like I've watched you more than a couple of times and I'm like, okay. Yay. Yeah. That's that. You guys went deep. You went hard in the paint. Listen, once, once our subscribers get to a certain point, I know where the censorship's going to cut in. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good we're going to push that limit as far as we can for now. <laughs> uh, yeah, girl. That's why and like by the way, one them. more quick question. Does the prostate hunter at Muse keep her nails a little shorter? Yes. Okay. Oh, All right. Prostate hunter. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure, boys. Good to see you, love. There you go. See you I next. love that woman. Emily, MuseMassageSpa.com. She is so fun. She's so real. It's oh, awesome. I, I, why can't everybody be like her? I, I said that to today because we do work together. And I'm like, why can't everybody be like you? Why can't everybody work like you? So open, honest, happy, fun. She operates maybe the best body. Well, it's not maybe. It is the most high-end body house in the entire country. So if you come to Toronto, go to Muse Massage Spa. She'll sit and talk to you. She'll hold your hand through it. It's a therapeutic service for a lot of people. Uh, MuseMassageSpa.com. Give them a follow. You can download everything there. You can follow them on Twitter. It's hard to find that authenticity, right? Yeah. Well, it's just she talks about shit like, you know, the, the porn thing. Without blinking. And she's like, no, here's the deal. It's ridiculous. Here's why. And then she'll like roll right into prostate milking and then roll right into fleshlights and chastity belts and then talk about the need for, um, you know, better protection for sex workers and talking about policy, government policy, pay po- Like, I mean, that might be one of the smartest people I know. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, she absolutely is fearless when it comes to talking about her business. She normalizes it. Right. Like you and I sit here and we butter through a conversation. We're like, oh, that sounds so crazy. 
right? Because we're part of the world. She's not. She's part of a real world. She's just herself, and she lives how she wants to live. So does Riley. That's why they're as successful as they are. Music you and I, com, by the way. You and I can reach a certain point in these discussions, and then we have to make fun of it. Yeah. Right. And that's that's our inability to treat this with any amount of seriousness. Seriousness, because. Uh, because we For probably losers. are a little more repressed than we're willing to admit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's I'm comfortable thing. with who I am and I've never had a problem. And sexually, I think I'm probably ahead of the, 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 you know, you know, ahead of the game when it comes to the rest of the world, right? Like just with my ability to deal with it as yeah. a natural act, but Emily's on another planet. Everything's normal to her. Yes. Like she's cheering for the adult diaper spa in New Hampshire. It's normal. So what you want to do being honest, just based on someone I know who likes to be dressed up in a, in a diaper and you know, I know, I know a dude that likes to be changed swaddled. Too. Yeah. 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 It was, it was a, it, one night years ago, sitting around drinking at a local pub here in Markham where I used to live. And uh, so there's like 10 of us around the table. And it's like one of those things we talked about earlier where a dude blurts something out that he thinks everybody's I'm into vegan. and nobody's into it. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck? What are you talking about, dude? And then so all the like, guys yeah, turn I, on. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> we were at his house one day playing poker and he and the wife, he, he brought down these furry handcuffs and he's like, yeah, hey, you guys into handcuffs one day? And everybody's like, no, no. <laughs> you know, so sure enough several months later we're out for pints this is not long ago and he's like yeah i don't mind being i don't mind like uh, getting cha- like in a diaper and then getting changed I, it's like a kink to me and again everybody same thing yeah, everybody kind of just looked down at their food kind of looked over at him we're like i'm not gonna to to let that go most people like and, and i'm not most people most people at that table were like don't say anything to me. and everybody kind of looked at me like don't don't do it and i'm like because I don't want to give up his name. But I'm like, uh, hey, Craig. <laughs> Let's explore. I'm like, tell me more about this. And he's like, oh, uh, yeah. Like, you know, it's just a thing, right? I'm like, mm, I don't know that it's just a thing. But uh, tell us more about this. And I start Everyone smiling. Has a thing. Fatal mistake. I go, yeah, we've all got things. Tell me more about your thing. And I start laughing. Because I can't not laugh at my buddy at poker drunk going, yeah, I like getting changed in the diaper sometimes. You know, like a wife changes me. And I go, Do you do you do a doo doo in <laughs> do you do a doo doo in the diaper? And he's like, Don't talk like that. I'm like, You do do a doo doo in <laughs> Looks like somebody does a doo doo in his diaper. <laughs> You and I are so similar on so many levels. He left. I'm not. Uh, I'm not letting that go. He left, and he hasn't talked to me since. Didn't come. To really? The last, yeah, didn't come to the last two. Craig's programs. off the friends list, eh? He's off the email list. <laughs> As he's getting up off of his chair, I'm like, oh, "Is a baby sad?" <laughs> it is surprising you is have any upset? friends. Oh yeah, no, I shouldn't at all. Each guy at the table, eight other guys, shaking. They're laughing so hard like this. Craig's putting his coat on. Baby put on his coat right now? <laughs> Come on, though. I mean, listen, everyone's got their thing. I got yeah, mine. Not, everybody doesn't have that thing. But no. you don't bring that up at a table full of 10 guys. I'm sorry. It just It's not. <sighs> I'm glad he did. I haven't laughed that hard in years. It's great. <sighs> That is very funny. Thanks for doing this, dude. Lachlan Cross at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Hey, you, you have can a find weekend. Nine five seven Cruise FM in Edmonton. Listen every single weekday morning. Follow him on Twitter. You have a great weekend as well. Anything you want to do before you go? Anything you got to say before you leave? No. All right. See you later. I'm good. I'm good. I uh, yeah. Have a great weekend. I'm glad I got a chance to get day drunk. Today's my day off from working out. So good. Are you Cheers. in the bag now? Good. Half nope. in the bag. No. Nope. I'll need right. another three to get to the. Half in the bag stage. Get to the halfway point. Get to the <laughs> entry point of drunk. Is that what you're saying? Not quite there yet. Yeah. Lubing up. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you soon. All right. Lock and cross 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton is where you can find him. And you can find Emily and Riley and dozens and dozens and dozens of muses 
at musemassagespa.com. We're brought to you by Muse on the Mic, the podcast. The ladies, we do business with them too. You should do business with them, musemassagespa.com. It's where you can find them, and they're located at 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario. Musemassagespa.com is where you can choose your muse, check out their schedule, get in contact with these ladies, and ask for the things that you think you want to try in a safe and comfortable environment with workers who have your best interests in mind. Um, you can also listen to their podcast, as we told you in our podcast, Muse on the Mic is the name of it. Go and download it anywhere you get your fine podcast, Google, Apple, Spotify. You can also find it at Cryer Media. Go to Cryer.co to check out that podcast and all of ours. And if you're in the city of Toronto and you are looking to explore, MuseMassageSpa.com, 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Muse on the Mic, the name of their podcast. If you liked what she had to offer there, you need to listen to her and Riley chop it up on their podcast, specifically their Patreon podcast. We're also brought to you by our friends at Cantorque. They make rugged, hardworking torque wrenches. They've got a podcast too. You can find their podcast, download and subscribe at their new website, cantorque.com. Get in touch with them. And not only can you listen to industry experts talk about their industry, you can also listen to Colin Wax about the racing team he's on with Alex Tagliani, Tagliani Racing. Yes, he is a professional racer and part of the Tagliani NASCAR crew, uh, and they have all your solutions under one roof. If you are looking for a bolting solution, they make them. They have them all. There isn't anything they can't do better than everybody else in the torque wrench industry for heavy industry around the world. They're Canada's leading industrial tool experts, giving you the very best in sales, service, rentals, calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication of industrial torque tools, unparalleled ex expertise for the past 20 years, all your solutions under one roof. doesn't matter if you need something serviced, if you need something made, or if you need something distributed, or if you're looking for a very specific solution, reliability you can trust, manufactured in Canada, proudly Canadian. Not many people can say that. They can. Go to cantorque.com for more details. Also brought to you by Muse Massage Spa and Gitch from edsfineimports.com. The best underwear on the planet. Boxer briefs, luxury boxer briefs. Pouch in the front. Engineered for any level of performance as well as everyday life. Gitch3 is your promo code. When you go to edsfineimports.com, use that promo code. When you buy three or more pairs of the best underwear you will ever buy, these boxer briefs with the pouch in the front, You'll get a free pair when you order three or more and another 15% off at checkout when you give them your email address. Uh, check it out today. they got a ton of different colors, four packs, singles, all kinds of underwear that you can never get away from. These will be the best underwear you've ever bought. Moisture wicking, uh, barely there fabric, incredibly soft. Run, walk, or sprint through your day with these underwear and get a free pair on me. Gitch3 is your promo code, edsfineimports.com. And, of course, brought to you by our partners and friends at factcheck.io. F A K T F A K T, pardon me, F A K T C H E K dot I O. Check out fatchat.io today. Uh, this is fact checking software for next generation users, consumers, and businesses that want to fact check social media posts, authenticity, and epistemology of what you're reading. It could be a video, it could be a picture, it could be spoken word, it could be a tweet, it could be a Facebook post, it'd just be a news story if it has a URL. Factcheck.io will make sure that you know what you're reading is authentic or not. They will give you sources to combat that information. And of course, you can, this is the beautiful part of the people at Fact Check, weaponize that truth back in the face of disinformation. It is a disinformation killer. Fact Check software has been vetted through a series of different developers. You've got lawyers, you've got journalists, you've got developers, you've got social scientists. Everybody is fed into this model and this program. And right now you can test their demo Beta testing at factcheck.io is underway, and if you would like to get in line in the queue to be a beta tester for Fact Check, you can. Go to factcheck.io and sign up today. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K dot I-O. Sign up for their beta test today. Kill disinformation with our friends at factcheck.io. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow on this very program. Don't forget to rate, subscribe everywhere we do things. You can get our Cryer Media stuff at Cryer Media, Cryer.co, again, Cryer.co, and YouTube. Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, Cryer Media on YouTube. Rate and subscribe. Go and download our podcast anywhere you get your fine audio podcasts as well, Google, Apple, Spotify, et cetera. Have a wonderful day and great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.